afflicted by mercy we crave, and comfort the dying, the light of the grave. Ave, ave, ave Maria, ave, ave, ave Maria. In grief and temptation, in joy or in pain, we'll ask thee, our Mother, nor seek thee in vain. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. You're all very welcome to our Holy Name Church this morning for Pat's Requiem Mass. Can I extend a special welcome to Father Mark Moran? of this parish who is parish priest in Widnes. It will be, I know, a source of great joy and happiness to Pat, please God, looking down on us in heaven to have Father Mark uh, with us for her Requiem Mass this morning. And I know the family very much appreciate his presence here with us this morning. And it's good for me as well to have a brother priest. Father Mark and I went through Ushaw College together many years ago. My dear brothers and sisters, we have gathered here to celebrate the funeral of Pat. Though we are sad and grieving, we have faith that the bonds of love and affection that unite us together through life do not break with death. All that Pat meant to us is still true, and our love for her as real as ever. In our prayer today, we not only remember Pat, but also those mourning her passing. We remember her daughters, Kath and Trish, and her three grandchildren, Lindsay, Kirsty, and Charlie, and her son-in-law, Michael. We also remember her grandchildren, Hallie, Liam, Miley, Louie, and Brody, her sister, Bernie, and all the rest of her family and friends. Today, we ask that Pat may be reunited with her husband, Chuck, and her sons, Charles and Sean, and may receive the reward of her goodness in the kingdom of heaven. And so, let us pray. O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Pat, whom you have called out of this world. And because she put her hope and trust in you, command that she be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you <coughs> in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And now Simon is going to read for us our first reading. On this mountain, the Lord hosts will prepare, prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away tears from every cheek. He will take away people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one who we hoped. We exult, we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Now, in response to our reading, we sing as our psalm the hymn, Do Not Be Afraid. <laughs>
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared your place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to be seated for a few moments. One of the aspects of living a Christian life with which Pat was familiar was going on pilgrimage. Her regular trips to Leward were an important part of her year and they provide a rich seam of memories for us to cherish now that Pat has left the earthly life. The pilgrimage has reflected much of Pat's personality, her faith and her commitment, but also her enjoyment of life and her sense of humour. Going on pilgrimage is a good metaphor for a Christian's journey through life. A pilgrimage is more than just a holiday. It's as much about the journey and what we learn along the way as the destination. As Christians, we're called to journey through life with the destination of heaven in mind. And Pat did this throughout her life. She had her fair share of sorrows, losing her husband and two sons. But nevertheless, she remained faithful and her faith sustained her through life's ups and downs. It's the faith that supported, comforted and consoled Pat during her life that we turn to now she has left the earthly life. We're gathered here in Holy Name, Pat's home church, to call to mind our faith at this difficult moment. The hymns, readings and prayers of Pat's Requiem Mass are united in their theme of hope and consolation at this sad and difficult time. Because faith in the Lord provides what nothing else can, hope. And this hope is the source of our comfort and consolation at this sad time. We hear this hope expressed clearly in the readings of Pat's Requiem Mass this morning. The first reading was taken from the prophet Isaiah and speaks of the mountain where the Lord will provide for his people. This mountain is the destination of our Christian pilgrimage through life and Isaiah shares with us what awaits us when we die. We're told that the Lord himself will wipe away the tears from our cheeks and death will be destroyed forever. He tells us that even in the midst of our sorrow now, we can still be hopeful because the Lord has destroyed death. Then in the Gospel reading, we hear from Jesus himself words addressed to those facing the reality of bereavement. He tells us that we're not to let our hearts be troubled, but to continue to trust in him. The Lord is the person in whom Pat placed her trust during her life, and so we can be confident that he won't desert Pat or us in our moment of need. The message given to Bernadette in Lourdes by Our Lady was that she was not promised happiness in this life, but in the next. Today, although we're sad because Pat is lost to us, We're also able to be glad because, please God, Pat has now been reunited with those who have died and gone before her. Our prayer this morning is that she's waiting for us in our eternal home, where there's no sorrow or pain and all tears 
are wiped away. Please stand. And now Simon is going to read for us our prayers of intercession. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Pat, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our For Pat, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear our, in your mercy. Hear our For our deceased relatives and friends, for all those who have helped us, that they may receive the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy. For the family and friends of our sister Pat, that they may unite together in their grief and be consoled by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy. For all those of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We pray in silence for a few moments for Pat. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister, Pat. Cleanse her and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the gifts. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, wash away, we pray, in the blood of Christ the sins of your departed servant Pat, and purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those you once cleansed in the waters of baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or sit. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour Savior of, of the world, world for by, by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernadette and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Malcolm, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servant Pat, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up the flesh of those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever 
the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you. you. For you are God of all the ages, and we will praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel or sit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word and, and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of Holy Communion, you should come forward, please, down the centre aisle in two lines to either to Father Mark or myself. If there's anyone here who's not a Catholic or not able to receive Holy Communion for whatever reason, you're most welcome to come forward for a blessing if you please indicate this by placing your arms across your chest.
to Pat. We're all here today to celebrate the life of Pat Strimpton. To everyone here, Pat is something different. She was a mother, a sister, an auntie, a cousin, a neighbour, a friend. But to me, she was my big nan. My nan was born four years before the Second World War to Owen and Mary Ann Finnan. They grew up in Norris Green where she was one of ten siblings, with five brothers and four sisters, one of those who was here with us today, Auntie Bernie. Who's been the most amazing sister not only through my nan's life, but especially through her sickness too. As you could imagine, with such a big family, it can't have been a quiet room but it was certainly one full of love. My nan worked several jobs growing up, like a family paper round, but I suppose it would be fair to say the most rewarding job she ever had was working in her uncle's fruit shop, because this was where she met the love of her life, her Chuck. He adored her and she adored him all the more back. So in 1956, they went on to marry, with her something blue being the colour of the dress that she wore. Together, they built a wonderful and happy home and raised four children. Kathleen and Trisha and their two sons, Charles and Sean, who I'm sure are up there now, taking their turn and looking after her. My nan loved her family, and with her kind and warm nature, it was impossible not to feel the same love for her back. She had three grandchildren, Lindsay, Kirsty and Charlie, who she absolutely adored. As the years went on, my nan's family only ever got bigger, which is exactly the way she would have wanted it. She had lots of nieces and nephews and great-grandchildren too, who she all loved for different reasons. But I think she loved her big family, not only because it was more people to take care for like her own, but because she had more dancing partners at every party. I'm now going to read a short poem for me now. It's hard to lose someone who's been there as you've grown, but harder still when the person you've lost was one of the kindest you've ever known. My big nan was so kind and generous, both traits of which to behold. She'd give her last penny to anyone. She had a heart of absolute gold. Her laugh was simply infectious, with the wildest smile you've ever seen. She loved the football, shouting at the telly and kicking the ball through the screen. She loved her holidays to Cyprus and Lewards, and just like the typical nan, she always loved to treat the kids, often with a pound at the ice cream van. She was the life and soul of the party, up for a dance her age barely showed. She'd always be the last one standing, and without fail she'd say, one for the road. You'd never see her upset or angry. She was the calmest soul without doubt, like the time Charlie smashed the back kitchen window and she didn't even shout. <laughs> I know we'll all miss her terribly, but we have to find solace somehow. I do that by thinking of Charles, Sean and Chuck and how they're all reunited now. The love that Pat and Chuck shared was so special right from the start. They adored each other and often he'd sing, you're the one rose that's left in my heart. 
Kath, Trish, Charlie and Michael, all doted on her too. You all looked after her so amazingly and she'll be endlessly proud of you. I know she wouldn't want us to be too sad, so we'll celebrate her in every way. She'll be remembered in our hearts forever until we meet again someday. My own memory of Pat from bringing her Holy Communion was at that time she used to like eating flumps, <laughs> but she did not like sharing them. <laughs> Please stand. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed, sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servant Pat, that cleansed by the Easter mysteries, she may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.